All right, section 4.4 is talking about laws of logarithms. That's what we're going to do today. You have a web assignment that's due Monday morning. Um, there's not a lot of work that can be shown. You'll see it's just pulling apart and smushing back together. But the concept is really, really important for solving, which is what we're going to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. So it's really important, guys. This is not going to take me a ton of time, but it's really important that you pay attention. Okay? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Laws of logarithms. These are rules <clears throat> that we are going to abide by. And they're very simple. It's three rules. And it's going to help us pull expressions apart, smush them back together if need be, and then that'll help us when we go to solving in our next lesson. So the first thing I want you to do at the top of your notes right here is write these two words down. You have the word expand, and then we have the word condense. What does it mean to expand something? Makes it bigger, okay? So I want you to write down, this is a very technical math term here, pull apart. All right? When you expand a logarithm <clears throat> or a logarithmic expression, we're pulling it apart. What does it mean to condense? Make smaller. Make smaller. Okay, we're going to say smush together. Again, super math technical, right? So your parents say you pull apart and smush together. <laughs> But that's exactly what we're doing. I'm not sure if that's how you spell smush. It may be s smush. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, you can put put together, but you, just so you know what I mean. But those are the words I'm going to use. Pull apart and smush together. So here are the laws of logs. I'm not going to go through the words right now. I want to talk to you about comparing the left-hand side of the equal sign to the right-hand side of the equal sign. Here's the left-hand side in yellow that I'm going to refer to. And then we're going to compare it to the green, right? So you guys can plainly see what I'm talking about. First of all, if you had to pick a side that was expanded versus pick a side that was condensed, what is the yellow side? Is it smushed together or is it pulled apart? Okay, good. This is the, this is the condensed side. This is smushed together. And the green one is expanded. It's pulled apart. Did I just change the colors that I used? Oh, okay. I, that's awesome. <laughs> the exact opposite of the colors that I use at the top. <laughs> if you notice on the condensed side in yellow, the word log is written one time. When you expand, when you pull apart, every single term, or every single thing in the log gets its own word log with a little base. All right, so there's three different laws we're going to look at. Look at number one. On the left-hand side, what is happening between A and B? All right, multiplication. All right, so when something is condensed and it's multiplied, when you pull it apart, what does multiplication become? Addition. Addition. So if something was already pulled apart and it's being added and you smush it together, what does it become? Multiplication. Multiplication and addition go together. All right? That's very important. Second thing I want to look at. <clears throat> look at number two. What's happening between A and B? Division. Good. So if something is already condensed and is being divided, when you pull it apart, what does the division become? Subtraction. And then vice versa. Good. Very good. And then lastly, if you have... This C right here, that's a what? It's an exponent. And it's going to become a what? What's a number in front of, a number in front of something? Exponents become? Coefficients. God bless. Exponents become coefficients and coefficients become exponents. <coughs> now, something I do want to bring to your attention. This little side note, this will come in handy. A fractional exponent. That means an exponent. That's not a whole number. It's not negative. But a fractional exponent is the same as a root. Meaning, if I have x to the 1 half power, what's another way I could write that? That's a fractional exponent. It becomes a root. This is the square root of x. 
If I have y to the one third, what does that become? The cube root of y. If I have z to the one sixth, what does that become? The sixth root of z. Do you guys understand that? Fractional exponents become roots. If you have a root, it becomes a fractional exponent. It's a very, very important thing to remember. All right, everybody with me? You got it, Gus? Okay. All right, let's look at the next one. <clears throat> now, here it says to evaluate. When you evaluate something, you're doing what? You're going to get the answer, all right? Evaluate means to get the answer. For our purposes, I want to do this just so you guys can see, but we're going to spend our time condensing and expanding. We're, we're not going to do a ton of evaluating because you guys have calculators. But if you were going to evaluate letter A, first of all, is this already pulled apart or is it already smushed together? It's already pulled apart. So I see this. i got to smush it together. This addition is going to become what? Multiplication. Multiplication. So when we write this smushed together, how many times do I write log little four? Once. Once. And then I have 2 times 32. Since we're evaluating, we're figuring out what that equals. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to simplify this a little more. This is the same as, whoops, this is the same as log little 4. What's 2 times 32? 64. And I want to know what that equals. As of the second, you guys don't know how to do that in your calculator. By the end of the lesson, I'm going to show you how to put that in your calculator. Because if you just hit log 64, that's not right. Log in your calculator is base 10. How did I tell you guys yesterday to think? We think exponentially. How would I rewrite log 4 64 exponentially? A big 4. And then what happens to 64? It happens to my question mark or my x. Okay, they switch spots. So this question is really asking 4 to what power? Gives me 64. Three. So your answer to this, when you condense this and then evaluate, it's log 64, sorry, log 4 of 64 equals three. That would be your answer. You smushed it together, <coughs> and then you found your answer. Yeah. All right, let's look at B. Kind of survey the information that you have, guys. Look and see. Are your logs the same? Yeah, if they're the same, you can go ahead and smush them together. You can condense. I see a minus sign. What does that minus sign mean? Division. Good. So if I'm going to smush this back together, if I'm going to condense it, this becomes log little 2 of what? 80 divided by 5. And we're trying to figure out what it equals. You can put an X or you can just put a question mark on here. So as we simplify, as we make this a little smaller, it's log base 2, log little 2. What's 80 divided by 5? 16 equals, I don't know yet. Again, I, you guys know this 100%, but it's kind of hard to look at it logarithmically. Let's think exponentially. If I rewrite this, it's 2 to what power gives me 16. 2 to what power is going to give you 16? Yep. So your answer to this is log base 2 of 16 equals 4. Everybody with me? Okay, good. Let's look at C. I changed C to be positive just to make it <clears throat> a little easier to work with. So let's look at C. But you notice about C. Okay, it's already condensed. What is this? It's a fraction. What does a fraction become? It becomes a what? Not a root. Not, I mean, uh, not subtraction. It becomes an exponent. So you could rewrite this as log 8 to the 1 -third. I could condense it a little bit more. How could I rewrite 8 to the 1 -third? What do fractional exponents become? Three. Square root. So in this case, it would be what? The cube root, okay? 
and then I will explain to you, I will teach you how to do that in your calculator. But anytime you see a fractional exponent, it's going to become a root. Square root, cube root, fourth root, whatever the denominator is, that's the root it becomes. Yeah, we're good? All right, here, we're going to do some examples here. Now, on your test, it's not going to say expand, condense. It's going to say condense or expand. And you have to figure out what you have to do. So the first thing you need to look at is, is this already smushed together? Yeah. Or is it already pulled apart? It's smushed, it's smushed together. So it's already condensed. We need to do what? Expand. we got to pull it apart. Now, you don't want to skip steps because you don't want to miss anything. Some of you are going to try and do it all in your head at one time. I already can point to the people who are going to do that. I don't think that's the greatest idea. But again, I can't tell you exactly what to do. But what do you notice about A? Let's talk about A. I see 6x in the middle here. What does that mean? Multiplication. So if this is being multiplied, what is that going to become when I pull it apart? It's going to become addition. Good. And each thing gets its own word, right? So I'm going to pull this apart. I'm going to say this is log little 2 of what? 6 plus log little 2 of what? X. X. Now, just check to make sure. Do you have any <clears throat> exponents that you need to bring down to the front? No. All right, that's good. Perfect. Are they all going to be that simple? No. All right, let's look at B, survey situation. There's a couple things going on here. Okay, I see exponents. What are those exponents both going to become? Co Coefficients. Co good. And then what about right here? That's going to become what? Addition. Addition. All right. Now, some of you, like I said, you're going to do everything in one, at one time. I'm not going to. I'm going to do two steps. I'm going to write this first as log will 5 of x cubed. What goes next? What, what sign do I put? Plus. Plus what? Log will 5, log base 5 of y to the 6th. And now you see, wait a second, I have exponents. Well, what do exponents become? Coefficients. So when you write this fully condensed or expanded, it's 3 log 5 of x plus 6 log 5y. And guys, please, please, please understand that what I wrote in pink and what I wrote in blue are completely different. How are they different just looking at them? The right, the five isn't small. In pink, guys, that's saying log base five. In the blue, it says log base 10 of five. So if I have to guess what you were trying to write, I guarantee you I'm gonna guess wrong. So if a number is supposed to be little, make sure it's little. If a number is supposed to be big, make sure it's big, okay? That makes sense? All right, let's look at the last one. There's a lot of stuff going on here. First of all, you guys are like, well, wait, this isn't a log problem anymore. It still is a log problem. What kind of a log? It's a natural log. All right, we know how to work with natural logs. Tell me some stuff that you see. Huh? Division. I see, okay, division. So that division is going to become what? Subtraction. Subtraction, good. What else do you see? This multiplication here is going to become what? Addition. Addition. Good. What else do you see? I see an exponent. Well, I don't, I don't really see an exponent, but do you see an exponent? Yes. What is this cube root going to be really? One third. One third. So that's an exponent. It's going to become a what? Coefficient. <clears throat> all right. Now, again, you can try to do this all at one time. I don't think that's the best idea. I think you should just kind of rewrite it to just pull apart the addition and the subtraction. Exactly how you see it is how you write it, guys. This says the natural log of A, what? Plus the natural log of B, then what? Minus the natural log of C to the one-third. Now, Marissa said she already put the one-third there. That's fine. Some of us can do that. Some of us can't. So I look at this and I say, okay, I have to, once I think I have it all done, I got to make sure there's no exponents. Do I have an exponent? Yes. Let's pull it down in front. So it's the natural log of A 
plus the natural log of B minus one third the natural log of C. Questions? Uh-huh. All right, so now, don't look at the directions. Just try to figure out, oh, wait, what are they asking me to do here? Are they asking me to smush this together or are they asking me to pull it apart? Smush it together. It's already smushed together. Do you guys see how there's a log here and a log here? What's the log base of A? I don't see a little number. What is it? Ten. Ten. All right. Do you have to write it? No. If you want to, you can, if that makes you feel better. But let's talk about the stuff that we see here. I see two things going on. <clears throat> What's one of them? Yep. This addition is going to become what? Multiplication. Good. And then what else? This is going to go here, and this is going to go here. And what, else, what do you notice about the one half? It's going to become a rot. It's going to become a square root. <coughs> fractional coefficients <coughs> become exponents. Fractional exponents become roots. So I'm going to condense A. How many times am I going to write log? One time. I'm going to write one time out in front my log. And then I'm going to say x to the third, because all I did was just move it back. Well, actually, you know what? Let me do it in two steps. Let me just, let, let's do it this way. So plus log of x plus 1 to the 1 half. All right, I'll just rewrite it one time. For, I'll, re, I'll rewrite it first with just moving the exponents or coefficients to exponents. Now I'm going to write log one time, and I'm going to say it's x cubed what? Times what? x plus 1 to the 1 half. Again, you can skip these steps if you want to. I can do one more thing to make this a little more simplified. What is it? Log of x cubed, and then this, correct, x plus 1. You do not multiply. You're not foiling out or anything like that. You're smushing together. You're not now going to multiply x cubed times but uh, uh, you can't actually do anything more than this. But on the next one, you're not going to foil anything out or anything. But when you condense, guys, your problem should go from big and it should be little. If you're expanding, it should go from little and become big. All right, let's look at B. Lots of stuff going on in B. What do you guys notice about B? Anything? Do you guys see coefficients? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So three is going to go here. One half is going to go here. Four is going to go here. What else do you see? I see this is going to become multiplication. And I see this is going to become division. I see one more thing. That one half is going to become a what? A root. Good. Now, again, you can do it all at one time if you want to. I don't think that's the greatest idea. So all I'm going to do is just rewrite the first line, moving the coefficients to exponents. So I have the ln of s to the third, natural log, plus the ln of t to the one-half, minus ln of t squared plus one to the fourth power. <clears throat> Now, do I have the same log or natural log the whole way through? Yes. So how many times am I going to write ln? One. One time. And where does it go? It goes out in front. It doesn't go in a numerator. It doesn't go in a denominator. It goes out in front. So what am I doing with s cubed and t to the 1 half? Multiplying. Multiplying it. And then I have divided by what? t squared plus 1 to the 4th power. Do not write t squared plus 1 times t squared plus 1 times t squared plus 1 times t squared plus 1 and multiply it out. Just leave it. Now, can I do one more thing to make this a little bit more simplified? I can take the 1 half and make it square root. So I have natural log of s cubed times the square root of t divided by 
t squared plus one to the fourth power. There you go. Good. Questions? All right, last thing we're going to talk about is the change of base. Okay. Here is the change of base formula right here. All right. What is the <coughs> base of the word log in your calculator? 10. So unless there is a little 10 there, you guys can't just plug in your calculator this and get an answer. You can't hit log 12 and get the same thing as log base 7 of 12. So there is a formula. The formula is super easy. If you look at how it's written, it's the log. Look, log of the number divided by log of the base. Do you guys see that? Log of the number divided by log of the base. So if you were going to evaluate <coughs> log 7 of 12, log of the number, so you hit log, the number is 12, divided by log of the base, so log 7, and hit enter. Give me four decimal places. 1.2 what? Okay, so three is fine. Now, guys, this is going to be an extremely important thing because we're going to go through these problems of solving, and some of them have 10 steps. And you're going to have to do this along the way. And if you reverse, put the 7 on top of the 12 on the bottom, you're going to get the wrong answer. So you have to understand it's log of the number divided by log of the base. Sometimes people say log of the visually bigger number. Like which number, when you look at it, look appears bigger. Not numerically, but which one appears bigger. Like in these two cases, if you're asked to evaluate using change of base, I want to see what's going in your calculator. So what would you put? Log 5 over what? Log 8. That's it. I mean, it's literally that simple. Give me three decimal places. What do you guys get? Come on, everybody practice. Log 5 divided by log 8. Point seven seven four. Perfect. If you hit log 5, you won't get that same thing because it's not the same as log base 8 of 5. So now if we're going to do B. Log what over log what? Log 20 over log 9. <coughs> what did you guys get? 1.363. You guys agree? 1.363. All right, now I want to show you something that's very important. Let's evaluate something else. Um, let's evaluate. Mm. No, that's fine. That's fine for now. All right, so you have homework, guys. You have a web assign that is due on Monday. <clears throat> You need to pull it up and start working on it. I'll give you guys back your quizzes in a few minutes. But the web assign is just all of this. It's expanding and condensing, expanding and condensing. For these change of base formulas, you guys are like, there's not much I can show you. You can show me this to show me your work. Show me what you put in the calculator. You guys have got to practice showing your work because if you don't, you're going to get lost in the calculator. Then you're going to get really lost when you're solving. For the expanding and pulling apart, exactly like I just did the problems, is exactly how you can write stuff down. It's okay, no worries. All right, we're good? Okay. <clears throat>